Welcome to Informia, a social media conversation for February 20th, 2014. I'm Nate Manahan. And I'm Dustin Hickel. Today we're going to talk about Facebook. $16 billion for WhatsApp? What's WhatsApp? I have no clue. I don't know either. We're going to talk about that story, a very visual story, and then I'm also going to jump into Yahoo mobile advertising. All kinds of things mobile and social media, all right here on Informia, a social media conversation. Keep watching. Welcome to Salcha. Uh, and our Informe show. Yeah. So Dustin, uh, you know, each week we kind of start talking about what our week looks like, what the weather's like out there. Yeah. And it just, you know, every day it seems like when we come to Thursdays, there's some type of like weird weather. And today yeah. it's thunder and rain in and February. 50 degrees. Yeah, and the February. snow is melting and flooding and everything else here in northern <laughs> Indiana. So we wish we could take some of this rain and send it to you out west. I was listening to uh, NPR News this morning and they were talking about all the drought. And I'm like, It'd just be nice if we could figure out how to all share everything. Yeah. We have too much, <laughs> they have too little, and we'll, we'll figure just all that out. We'll put it all in some tanks uh, and roll it out there. And speaking of too much and too little, apparently the founders of WhatsApp have too much money now. Yeah, yeah. I don't. What was the number? Sixteen. Sixteen billion. billion four B. billion. Four billion cash. Twelve billion stock, and then three billion to try to retain all their staff because they want to keep the staff and run it. Mm -hmm. um, so that I'm assuming my understanding of business is stock options and all that. Um, so, you know, a total market number somewhere around 19 billion yeah. it fluctuates somewhere, but 16 billion real day market value yeah. when it, when it goes. Seriously. What? Um, so first of all, I had never installed WhatsApp in my life. So I installed yeah. it yesterday when okay. I saw the news Great. went in. And I did my first WhatsApp this morning. Thank you, Scott Feather. And uh, he tweeted and said, welcome back <laughs> to uh, WhatsApp. <laughs> what is, my understanding of WhatsApp is very minimal, but basically it's an SMS replacement tool. Yeah, yeah. It seems and it's like not using text messaging. It's using internet messaging services. Yeah, kind of like Facebook chat, kind of, yeah. you know, that sort of thought. So I think about it that way. I'm sure you mean images and texting, and it's all just through your 4G or your Wi-Fi. Yeah. So uh, here's, I mean, yeah. if you don't have texting on your phone, that might that's a really well. And here's what is you you can transfer it. Your account becomes tied to your phone number, which that's the thing I don't know if I totally mm -hmm. understand because then if you change your phone number, do you lose your account? But as long as your contacts are in there, so it's it's playing off your contacts. So as long mm -hmm. as your contacts are there, then it can play off your phone, I guess. Um, it's an interesting whole little system there, yeah. and I don't know what Facebook's goal is other than they saw an active system of 450 monthly users that are 70% active on a daily basis that are doing it on a mobile platform and they're struggling to stay relevant on mobile and they Absolutely. realize that is the future of their income and the future of being able to engage people. Now, first thing that's out of those who founded WhatsApp, which I uh, go read the stories. I love mm -hmm. the stories on uh, the founders oh, of WhatsApp, gosh, gosh, gosh. why they founded it and some of the things they learned as they went along. But they said, look, there will never be advertising. And so what, how WhatsApp currently works is your first year is free and if you keep using it, it's 99 cents a year. Uh, and that's how they make money. So in theory, 450 million active users, those 450 million have paid a dollar. Right. So that's 450 million, you know, so if they get up, they scale and they become Facebook numbers. Mm -hmm. They, you know, and they're a billion active users. Billion. So that's a billion dollars a year. Is that enough for Facebook or are, do they have some other goal if they're not going to be able to run advertising, which is what they've committed to? You know what? I think, I mean, we talked about this before the show. Facebook paper falling out of the top 100 apps. I think it's just kind of more of a desperation move. Again, I'm not on the inside of Facebook and I don't really know every, where everything's going on on the backside of WhatsApp, so I can't speculate too much, but I just, it's, it felt kind of like a desperation move. It kind of felt like we need something on mobile that's successful that we own, and so they just bought it. So, and you know, the big play a couple years back was Instagram. Bought yeah. it for a billion dollars. Everybody like that was a steal swallowed a billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> this is 16, yep. in essence, Instagrams. Yeah. Is it worth it? I, hard to say. Yeah. I mean, maybe. I mean, if, if, if it continues to grow and it continues to show success and they, I, I don't know, if they're not going to put ads on there, Facebook's about making a yeah. lot of money through mobile ads. That's going to be tough. Yeah. I, I think really what they're trying to do is Facebook realizes that mobile is where it's at. Mm -hmm. It's getting one-to-one -one messaging is where people really want that, and they want that intimate. Of and so how do brands jump in there? I don't know. Um, yeah. Because we're currently with WhatsApp, you have to have their phone number in your mobile device in order to connect with them on WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. um, now, maybe... 
if they integrate Facebook and then you're able to integrate your page, that becomes, it's like Instagram direct, mm -hmm. but with text messaging, because there's something there. And so, because being able to go one-on-one -on -one or one-on-10, -on you know, and actually connect directly to your customer, directly to your potential customer, mm -hmm. and give them a message that's tailored right down to who they are, where they are, and what they're doing. That's the information that Facebook's trying to gain. Yeah. So, and maybe it's a usage case, because then they're, they'll be, have usage statistics. These yeah. people, this group of people, we can't get you directly on their WhatsApp, but we know this is how much they use it. Mm -hmm. And this is how much they're on their mobile device. So if they're using WhatsApp, their mobile device, and we'll be able to target ads through their other you know, yeah. apps. And uh, Facebook long-term ad, as I'm thinking, I'm totally talking out loud, guys, so who knows what was true. And I may change my mind before this even is edited. Uh, but long-term play, collecting more and more information to make more and more targeted ads across their other platforms, like a Facebook paper, which we'll mm -hmm. post that article, but you mentioned already Facebook yeah. paper, out of the top 100. Yep. They're gonna continue to try to find as many signals as they can. And what's interesting is the big number, 16 billion, I forget what the number, but that came out that Google had offered them, I think, 4 billion a while back, or mm. 3 billion, and they turned it down and said, we're never gonna be acquired. Well, the, the tr truth is, never going to be acquired has a little asterisk by it unless you offer me enough money. Yeah, absolutely. And enough power. Because what's interesting here is, not only did the CEO and founder get $16 billion, and it kind of realized it split out and crossed off, and Sequoia Capital, which was a big player, and that gets their chunk. Um, but he is a board member of Facebook now. Yep. He gets a chair, at the, uh, a seat at the table. Yep. And, and Facebook's an interesting place because there aren't a lot of seats at that table. Mm -hmm. um, so what a great play for WhatsApp for a company that um, long term, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a it's an interesting play. I think for us, we'll watch it. I think they made a smarter choice than Snapchat did. Oh yeah, I, I mean not even close. This is yeah. this is where you see the difference in. Now, does this make the ante up to Snapchat, who's not wanting to be acquired? Does Google go out there and that number? Facebook offered them, I think, what three? I'm getting yeah, my numbers three, all confused. Um, just three billion. No big deal. Uh, Small numbers. Three. Google goes out there and had needs something to play in this realm, and they're looking for more mobile imp implications mm -hmm. here. I don't know. All these stories are linked right here in our lower thirds and yeah. the and the production. Those who are getting to watch live, we hope that you'll join us every week mm -hmm. right here. We love watching live, and eventually we'd love to hear you comment. And you may be commenting right now, and I can't see it. So. If you're really interested in doing that, I know I can find you at Twitter. So if you mention me on Twitter, uh, NK Manahan or Dustin Hickel, I don't know if you're monitoring your tweets. Uh, for sure, NK Manahan, I have it right up here on me. Um, moving on, you know, let's talk. I'm going to jump a little bit, a little curveball here, and go to okay. Yahoo. Oh. And uh, Yahoo launched a new thing called Gemini. And Gemini allows advertisers to get performance and ease of search combined with the scale and creativity of native advertising. And to be honest, I haven't been able to use this yet. This was something that came out yesterday. But here's what I like. My goal is to get my message to any person on this that's carrying a device like this mm -hmm. at a time that they want to read it when they're reading it. And I can't be always in front of my computer doing that. Yep. I can't always be managing that through there. And Yahoo is saying, in order to get to mobile advertising, we're creating an app. And I haven't used it yet. haven't tested it. It may yeah. be a complete, you know, you know, Whole, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but here's the story of the day. Um, we're trying to figure out a way how to get directly to messaging people. And and I was thinking this. We have a lot of conversations in the office, and we have there's a product here that we run that does SMS text marketing, and I think there's a major place for that. Mm -hmm. But the reason WhatsApp exists is because people get frustrated with what the capabilities of SMS and the personalization of SMS. Mm -hmm. And there are certain people they don't want to be able to do it, and they don't want to have to sign up for brands. And people are very text messaging is something that's very very personal to people, mm -hmm. and so that personal interaction with brands. It, they're going to limit it to one, two, maybe none. Yeah. Um, so we're all trying to figure out how do we get in front of their eyes and make them think the things they want to think. Yeah. Um, Yahoo's going to try to make that easier for us. We're all jumping in this mobile world. Social media is a mobile technology. Yeah, they, they, yeah I think it's interesting. So Yahoo, I'm going to be watching that. We're going to be watching that in the weeks to come. Yeah, absolutely. Something really interesting. Uh, if you get a chance to play with it and you start, you know, maybe we'll do a review or something yeah. in the next couple next couple shows. And if you've used it, interact with us. Yeah, we'll let like us know. know. We'd like to know how it went and what you thought. Um, I'm going to take us to the next story. Um, I actually might go back here. I'm going to go back to Facebook 
I know you went you went to Yahoo I know, and I'm I going jumped. back to Facebook. You skipped my story. Um, five ways businesses are using <laughs> visual storytelling on yeah. Facebook. And this is something that, that I do daily and people that I work with that are that are on that are on, on the social media team, uh, we do every day. This is a really cool ad, social media examiner, they do tons of good stuff. Um, why tell a visual story? A picture's worth a thousand words, right? That's what it's all about. It's all about, you know, you see it and it just creates this this feeling inside of you that you almost can't explain because you don't have enough words to do it, right? So that's the idea on social media. You want to do things that create feelings in people that yep. that resonate with them and that, that give them that sort of, like, wow, I love Salcha because they post stuff that just make me feel good yep. and I see these pictures. The one that I'm looking at, the very first one that comes up, there are five tips here. I'm going to pick one. Nate's going to pick one. In. And then read the, and then go ahead and read the rest of them. Um, the very first one, use clever uh, photo collections. They, they basically, American Express here posted a pin on Pinterest, a top hat, some sticks, a scarf, a carrot, a couple pieces of coal, and it looks like a deconstructed snowman with an American Express card kind of hidden within it. It's just cool. You look at it and you're like, oh man, snowman, he melted. What, like, what happened? Yeah. And it's just, it, it got your attention right away. Excellent job, American Express. Obviously, they know what they're doing there. Um, really cool stuff. Tell a story and be clever. Great job for the snowman getting an American Express card. I mean, yeah, that's, that's impressive. Good. <laughs> I mean, I, it makes me a little nervous there when inanimate objects had their American Express card. Or whose card was that that was hiding inside the snowman? <laughs> Sorry, American Express. had to jump in on there. Now, I'm going to go with number four. And you look at all these social media examiner, again, knocking it out of the park. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, I like number four, incorporate fan generated content. And I think it's not just, it's, it's the customer generated content, it's engaging, it's saying, mm -hmm. I'm not the only one who can create great content, yep. let's do this together. And we can even do it around our product. In this case, they're showing Starbucks and how Starbucks uh, uses their customers' uh, photos to give them appreciation and things like that. But no matter what you're doing, whether mm -hmm. you're a digital company and you're selling wares you know, on your website or you're a coffee shop, there are ways to take the pictures that people are taking or encourage them to do it. There's, mm -hmm. you know, let's do contests on Instagram, which is another Facebook company, but make that visual representation, not just your own, but actually someone else does it. And that yeah. gets an amazing share because if you use my picture and you, you know, share that around, I'm going to retweet it. My friends are going to retweet it. My friends are going to share it on Facebook, whatever that is, whatever mm -hmm. medium we're using there. Um, so incorporate fan generated content, a great way to tell your story yeah. visually on Facebook and you know, Facebook, we can say they're struggling, you know, hey, their app fell out of the top 100, but they're still a billion active users monthly. Um, and people are signing in, interacting. And here's, here's what I know. I, I, I notoriously don't sign into Facebook a lot. Mm -hmm. But in order to find certain news, I have to sign in. I had a friend of, who had a baby here in the office. Mm -hmm. Only way it was posted was through Facebook. Only way I knew how to do it. I, I, could have tweeted us. No, uh, <laughs> could have tweeted no us. but uh, uh, but that's that's how I found out. Facebook is still. I, I have used it wrong, and now I have to pay the price, and I need to go back. But it's still a place that all brands should be playing because mm -hmm. even I, who wants to quit Facebook and so wants just not be involved in it, goes back to it. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, yeah, yeah it's just a great central hub. It really is, and they've done a good job of making it a way to connect with people that you care about yep. and with your life and with um, you know that sort of thing. And I, I'm going to piggyback on top of the, hey, use customer-generated stuff and say, one time I got re I got uh, tweeted at by Adidas Golf, made my day, yeah. made my year. I retweeted it, a bunch of my friends retweeted it, it was great. So you, if you're, especially if you're a big brand or if you're a well-known local brand business, go ahead and do that because it really makes people's day to know that they've been recognized by something yeah. other than another person, you know, yeah. so pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. All right, well, so we got another social media examiner article. It's uh, about Google+, Plus, which I'm a big fan of. I think you are a big fan of it's yeah. kind of cool because now we both have Android devices and it's all really well integrated really cool but how to encourage Google Plus fans to share your content we talk about Facebook a lot we talk about Twitter a lot but this is going to be a good practical application for you on Google Plus and again social media examiner knocking it out of the park I'm going to go ahead and pick the start with the very first thing it says how do you find your best fans that takes legwork you know it takes you going out there and it takes you joining groups and it takes interacting with people and finding local people and finding people who care about your industry and just interacting with them, answering their questions, responding to their posts, uh, putting out posts there in different groups. You guys are all part of communities, sorry, communities that you're yes. all a part of and just trying to drive interaction that way. It's actually, it's kind of hard to think about it as, as, as a brand going out there and trying to get 
um, new people to share your content, but they're people and you're a person. And so you just interact that way. Even if you're a brand, uh, as long as you're saying things and acting in a way that's going to positively reflect, reflect your brand, social media marketing is, isn't, you know, it's H to H, right? It's like that right. article we talked about a couple weeks ago. It's human to human. You guys are both still people. So just go out there, uh, interact with them, be real, be honest, be transparent, and just, uh, and just start to build relationships because that's ultimately what leads to successful social media because yeah. it's social. It's what it is. And then ultimately what they're saying is how do we get people to become brand evangelists for us? Mm -hmm. And this article is, and how do you find your best fans, the ones who, and this is true across all social media, I mm -hmm. think really. In some ways you have to interact in order to get them to interact with you. And yep. they're not looking, we don't, none of us jump into social media and say, how in the world am I going to interact with Pepsi today? We jump in because we want to jump in with our friends, and we have to somehow as brands jump in to add value. And so some of that is make sure that we're doing it on a personal level. Mm -hmm. And then when we jump in as a brand, it helps us figure out how we're going to interact with them, uh, help meet their needs. And sure. Just, and I, I think that's the biggest thing for me on social media is the more I learn on a personal level, level the more I know how to use my brand because I know how, pe how I want to be treated. Yep. And do unto your others as you want done unto yourself. Yeah, you know that is a proverb that has lasted, you know, a few years, yeah, a, and, little while. Uh, a little while, you know. And so we can do that on social media. Mm -hmm. And to me, the, first, I just always give a shout out to social media examiner. They just do a great job interacting. There's a video in here on using ripples that I had never used ripples before, and I still haven't played with it. But I know something about it, and I had never. I didn't know mm -hmm. anything really about using. Have you used Ripples before? I haven't. I've not yeah. used it before. And so they just, you know, good job, Social Media Examiner. We hope to figure out ways to practically give tips on small business and social media, but just general use, you can't do better in Social Media Examiner, no, just how to great. use. Great yeah. job. I, I mean, really, like you said, it's just about engaging with people and interacting and building those relationships. Yep. Really cool stuff. Um, the next one's about WordPress. Do we want to talk about WordPress today? Well, I think let, let's just do this. Everything you put out in content needs to have an easy and simple way and a good way to visually be represented on all social media. Mm -hmm. And so this article, we'll splash it up here. Thank you, JT. Uh, but this is an article, uh, eventually for those who are watching live, we'll figure out a way to do that for you. But this is simply an article put together of six plugins that you can put into WordPress that will make sure your social media sharing is working and that's mm -hmm. not broken. And I think all too often we allow it to be broken. This is just another social media examiner to do that. Um, I think for the ultimate end to our day, let's end with two last stories okay. here. Let's end with uh, seven ways your sales uh, yeah. can be connected to uh, business B2B social media. Yeah. And this is a great article by socialmediab2b.com. I liked what they're saying. Look, we I, I love what Hub, how HubSpot says this. Mm -hmm. It's not marketing. It's not sales. It's marketing. All mm -hmm. these things are interconnected. It's not social media for marketing. It's not social media for sales. It's not social media for customer service. All of us have to figure out how to use it, and we need to be on the same team. Yep. And uh, that's where the you know the huge fight a lot of times in big brands is where does the social media director go? Mm -hmm. Does it go under marketing? Does it go under customer service? Does it go under uh, HR? Uh, because and and the answer is yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, yep. And that it becomes a difficult thing for the flow chart, but it becomes <laughs> something that we look all salespeople in this article. They need to make sure that their profiles, their personal profiles, represent what they're selling, who they're selling, and it doesn't mean they're always talking about you know selling their new hair widget. Yeah. Um, because <laughs> you know that those hair widgets sometimes you just don't want to talk about them anymore. No, yeah. But they also need to represent all their profile, it's important to know what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. The second thing that they talk about, schedule time for focused social media activity. So we talk about this all the time. If you've got an hour a day, take that hour a day, block everything else out, and just work on doing social media marketing for your small business. And then we talk about you know slicing it into different pieces of the pie. Is Facebook gonna take the most time? Twitter is gonna take the most time? Make sure that every day, if you can, that you just cut out a piece of time that's focused specifically on social media marketing. That's it. That's number yeah. two. Yeah, and so as we look at this, read this article, some of it's just obvious. Spend more time on Twitter, spend more time on LinkedIn, spend more time on Facebook, make sure your things look good. But what we don't realize is that's just as important as part of the sales as knowing your elevator pitch. Uh, because often now, per, you make up, set up an appointment to go meet with someone in a sales type scenario they're going to search for you beforehand and they're going to have seen your Twitter feed, your Facebook feed, your LinkedIn profile before mm -hmm. you walk in the door. Yep. And so no longer is it that phone call that's going to get you in that door. 
or even get you that sale to start with. Yeah. It's going to start on your social media. And that shows how important because they talk about also making sure you're doing blogging, which we yeah, taught is totally. very important. Mm -hmm. But I like this, that all this stuff on social media, end with this before we go to our infographic of the week, the lie of content marketing. This yeah. is by Social Media Explorer. They are reposting a uh, slide share, which mm -hmm. I like to use a lot. I love this. At the heart of content marketing, at least most of it, is an insidious lie and one most of us aren't even aware of. Why? Because we're lying to ourselves. We give lip service to abandoning the old ways of firing messages to customers. We cloak ourselves in metaphors of gentle fishermen patiently waiting for customers to bite or farmers gently planting seeds. But guess what? We still think we brands are in control, but we're not and we never have been. And that's with social media and it's more clear on that than yeah, ever. Absolutely. And I, if we keep clicking through this slide share, uh, it's just really, first of all, it's a really creative slide share. I think it's real cool. It's just white with black uh, text, but it just the way that it's built, it makes sense. You can click through 80 slides real fast. That's what yeah. I'm saying. But they're, what they're saying is change the way that you're viewing it, right? You're not firing information at, at your customers, even if you think that you're sitting here just dangling a worm and waiting for them to bite with your content marketing. Uh, the cool thing was they said, no, you're the fish. Right. And that's, that kind of caught me off guard. Right. And you're not the farmer either. Right. You're actually the seed. Mm -hmm. And you're planting your seed. And, and it's a whole different uh, scenario. And it's all about this real-time marketing, too. Absolutely. That, you know, we think, okay, this is all going to change because I'm going to put this great post out and it's going to... And maybe you do. Maybe you have something so influential you're going to say. But that's one in a billion chance that you have something so influential to say that's going to, you know, it's going to be a... <laughs> YouTube sensation right. and you're going to get those 150 million views on YouTube. You can't predict that. You can't yeah. and you just have to keep cultivating and saying, okay, I'm going to be a seed and I'm going to put out good content and I'm going to talk and interact and I am not going out there to bait people. I'm going out there to interact with people and mm -hmm. I'm actually a fish looking for little things to grab on. And it's a whole different metaphor change and flip. Yeah. We're not in control anymore. No, and you know, like you said, we've never had been. Yeah. It's ultimately what the customer wants, what the customer needs, and, and what we can do for them right. to solve those needs. Yep. So really cool. Really cool. This one, this is just a really really good slide share. Nice yeah. find. Yeah. Lastly, let's end up our time today with our infographic of the week. Yeah. How top brands are using Twitter. Um, a study of the interband top one hundred brands. Um, really interesting. We talked about Google Plus last week and how brands are using Google Plus. This one, the five most followed companies, the very first one actually kind of surprises me is Facebook. They're the number one followed company on Twitter, then MTV, then Google, then Starbucks, and then Microsoft. Five big boys. And yeah. that's, it's funny to me that Facebook's the most followed on Twitter. If that tells yeah. you anything about Facebook, you got to be there. You know yep. what I'm saying? <laughs> no, and, and it, we look at this and you're like, yeah. These brands, it also shows that people are still looking to do things with people on Twitter. Yeah, for and sure. Individuals. Because you look at the uh, Miley Cyrus, and mm -hmm. I don't even know, Justin I don't know all Bieber. the numbers, and it, their numbers are ridiculously they compared to just them. brands. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, and so we want to think that it's a one on one conversation. It's like what we had a couple weeks ago when we talked about the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. I want to think that Hillary Clinton sat down and made that joke about Fox News yeah. and was doing it from her couch as she was walking to the Super Bowl and it jumped out of her mind. I'm still probably going to live in that delusional world. It wasn't a PR team that actually did that. And that's what we want to think about Twitter. And we have to figure out a way as brands to do that. That's what jumped mm -hmm. out at me. It's their numbers at 13.3 million. And I don't know what their current number is. We could look that up really quickly, sure. I guess. But. Uh, they're, the numbers that top brands are getting, not as big. Not even close. No. Like and, not even scratching the surface. And it means that we have to realize when we engage with people on Twitter, one, people may engage with me at NK Manahan more than they do with Salcha. Mm -hmm. I know Salcha will hopefully have more followers, but I have to realize that they can be both. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, I have to try to figure out how does Salcha become more personal and mm -hmm. become a person. Yeah. So, I mean, ultimately, it's just like everything else. You know, if you're a brand and you're using Twitter, uh, which you should be, you know, if you're a small business uh, trying to get out there uh, and, and grow your social media presence, it's that person to person interaction that really makes a big difference. I mean, I can go out there and tell you how great the deals are that we have going on this week. I can tell you how excellent, you know, our product is and all this stuff. But nobody, I don't want to say nobody cares, 
But if you're not yeah, something okay. that they can inter someone and something that they can interact with, nobody cares. Yeah. You know, if they don't have a personal connection with you and they don't have a reason to come back to you and you haven't given them that, then you're going to have a really hard time driving sales off of your just telling people about your specials. Yeah. So I think what ultimately comes down to here is as a brand, I, we have to start looking at ourselves as people, not as big companies. Absolutely. And yeah, I think those are great points for us to think about. Other ideas, anything else on this uh, infographic that they're looking at that you think is important? You for know us what? I thought it was neat. Just uh, the more you engage, the more you grow. Yeah. You know, and then just show the that number of times that you tweet a day affects the number of times you get interaction. Just simple things that we talk about on yeah. this show all the time. Um, but just, you know, factually laid out here from big brands is, is good to see. Yeah. So check it out. Great yeah. job social media today for finding the infographic and Simply Measure for putting it together and the research that goes behind it, mm -hmm. um, looking at the top 100 brands in social media. And that, what I think does that for small businesses is we look at the top 100 brands and then we try to figure out how do I do that when I'm, you know, wanting to make it on Main Street America. Mm -hmm. And we can learn what they're doing and then replicate it and put it into our smaller context yep. because we don't need 3 million followers to be successful. No. We need 1,000 sometimes active, inter interactive. And if we get 70% you know, mm -hmm. engagement, which is ridiculous, yeah. um, how much more powerful would we be? Yeah. And uh, let's use our tools. And we'd love to know what you guys are thinking yeah, about absolutely. all this. I want to know how you're using social media as a small business, how you're actually digging in deep. And uh, if you're a restaurant or a retail store or an online store, or if you're selling um, accounting services or you're doing people's taxes and uh, out of your home, what are you using social media to expand your brand? How are you doing it? Interact yeah. with us. You can grab me at, at Salcha, S-A-L-T-S-H-A. -S Hopefully you see that. Yeah. Or at NK Manahan. That's my personal account. I'd love to interact with you on Twitter. Yeah, and I'd love to help you with any social media questions that you have as far as developing your small business. At Dustin Hickel or at Paper Media, either one. I'm there to help. Yeah. So this has been another episode of Informing, a social media conversation. We'll see you next week.